Hi everybody. In this video, we're gonna cover the first time setup of your Gemini astronomical computer. So when you first set up your Gemini, it's important that we get the correct values and settings for you and your location and time and so forth. Uh, if you do this correctly, and it's not hard to do, but we'll walk through it now. Uh, but if you do it correctly, everything else is just gonna work and it's gonna work really well. If for some reason you don't do the initial setup correctly, it's gonna cause a lot of problems. You're gonna have inaccurate go-tos. You might have inaccurate um, uh, tracking, things like that. So although it's easy to do, it's really important to do it right. So we're gonna actually walk through this right now. Now there are a couple ways to do this. Um, you can of course have your uh, Gemini connected to your mount and do all the setup that I'm about to describe. Uh, the other thing you can do is actually you can bring it inside uh, as I've done in this video and uh, you don't need to attach it to your computer. You do need your hand controller. Here's my hand controller. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through this. Uh, we're gonna need access to uh, a website, which is really handy. And again, you can actually do this uh, beforehand and write down some of the values. But let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So I have a Gemini set up. Uh, it's turned off right now. The, the hand controller is connected. And uh, we're gonna see if we can do this well. So I am gonna go ahead and power on the Gemini and you're gonna see something like this. And uh, I'm gonna use, instead of my uh, big fingers here, I'm gonna use this little stylus. You can use your fingers. There's no magic to the stylus. The only reason I'm using this is because my fingers are gonna get in the way. So uh, for this first setup, I'm going to use the quick start function. Now, normally uh, you would do probably a cold start or a warm start. A quick start is actually a cold start followed by this little wizard that's gonna walk us through the initial settings uh, so that we can verify in this first time setup all of the settings that we want and that we need. So the first thing is we're gonna choose the mount type. Now I have a, uh, a G11 here uh, that's used, but of course you see we here have the, the GM8. Whoops, let me just press that. The GM811, which is the next one, uh, the G11, and of course the G11T. Um, chances are if it's a brand new mount, it's, de it's not going to be one of these uh, mounts that we no longer uh, make, uh, which are the HGM200, very, very uh, classic mount. And then the Titan, which we're not currently manufacturing, but is still uh, a current product. So chances are it's probably the GM8, the G811, the G11, or the G11T. So just pick, pick the, uh, the one that you know is your mount. And we're going to verify the gearing later on, but this is the first step. So we're gonna click next. Now, uh, it's gonna ask us to set uh, the location. If you have a Lost Mandy GPS unit, you should have plugged it in right now. And there's a separate video uh, that I'm gonna put a link to on how to use the GPS. But essentially when you plug it in and it starts blinking, you can actually press the query GPS button and it will give you the actual data and just fill it in for you. It's really easy to do. If not, that's okay. Um, we're gonna actually type it in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a place where you can get the most accurate information because uh, setting your location is one of these areas that seems to be a little bit confusing. So we actually have, I'm gonna go to uh, hopefully this next one here. We have a web browser here and uh, there's a great resource site. It's kind of a combination of community and uh, Lost Mandy resources. Uh, but it is gemini-2.com. And uh, this site has tons and tons and tons of information. I'm not gonna go through it all, but you have a hand controller tutorial, you have a web tutorial, all kinds of great stuff. And if I scroll down, you can see that there is a nice link here that says get latitude, longitude, and time zone offset from your address. And that's exactly, this is the, this is the, the link that we need. This is the one we want. So uh, what's nice here is you can actually just type in your address. It doesn't have to be uh, anything magical, just you know your actual address. So what I'm gonna do uh, just to make sure I can show you how this sets up, I'm gonna type in uh, the address for uh, the White House here in the US, Washington DC 20500 and click submit. Okay. 
And uh, this is the important stuff here, right? So it's going to give me the latitude and longitude. And you'll notice that it's in uh, hours and minutes and seconds. And that's the format that we need it in. Uh, it's going to give me the current uh, time zone offset. And it's going to give me the current date and time. So I can use all of these things here uh, for this setting. So I am going to, uh, you can just take a look at this, but I'm going to have it up and I'm going to switch back here. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to first click the longitude. And, uh, you know, here in the, in the um, Western Hemisphere, uh, the values uh, for longitude are negative. We are to the west of uh, the prime meridian or, or uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So I'm going to type in minus 77 colon uh, 02. And you want to use just the hours and minutes. This doesn't have to be incredibly accurate. This is really to make sure... Uh, when we do our go-tos, uh, they're going to be correct. So I'm going to enter that. And then I'm going to put in the latitude, uh, which I'm going to go delete, 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 38, colon, 53. Okay, enter. And uh, the time zone is very important because we're actually going to be using uh, local time and it uses the time zone to, to make sure that it understands where it is. So when you do your go to's, they're going to be accurate. Uh, and this is daylight savings time sensitive. So you really do need to make sure that this is accurate. And right now, uh, in the East Coast of the United States, it's minus 500, just as it's shown in that uh, setting. Okay. So we're good with that. And we're going to click next. And it's going to reshow time zone here, uh, which again, we don't need to change since it's accurate. I want to double check the date, which uh, as we were looking at uh, for the website here, you can see uh, this gives me all the date and, and time information. So we're okay with that, I think. Uh, so the date is 1-19-21. Uh, that's U.S., of course. We have uh, the month, the day, and then the year. Uh, that is the format, of course, to put it in uh, for Gemini. And then the time, it's 24-hour time. Uh, so here we're going to have uh, delete, 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 delete. I'm going to put in 18, uh, 38. And in this case, for time, you can put in the second. So I'm going to skip ahead. It says enter. Okay. And now uh, these are the basic uh, setup things that need to be uh, correct. And it's important to get correct, obviously not too complicated. And then I'm going to go ahead and click the set button. Now, one of the quirks about this interface uh, is if you put your finger over it and you press set, you can't really, sometimes you can't tell because it's, uh, you can't tell you press the button because it covers it up. But uh, sometimes I'll press this a couple times just to make sure that it's set correctly. And then I'll click next. And that is our initial setup. That's all we need to do. These are uh, some additional next steps you could potentially do. But what I'm going to show you real quick is I want you to confirm uh, the uh, gearing for your mount. And what we're going to do is click back and back again. And this is the home screen, right? This is the home screen of the hand controller. And it has the four diamonds. That's how you know uh, what that is. But we are going to go to menu. <clears throat> mount and we're gonna go to gearing and there's a bunch of numbers here and it's not super critical uh that you know about all these numbers they have to do with uh the worm gear and the spur gear and the encoder steps things like that what's important is that it's accurate so i'm going to go ahead and go to uh <clears throat> the gemini uh 2 uh website again and i'll put this link in the in there but there is a page, and of course you can see it up here. I'll, again, I'll put the link in the description below. But I want you just to double check. Whoops, sorry. Uh, where did it go here? Uh, 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 there we go. So I want you to double check for your mount type. So you have, here's a G8, G11, uh, G11T, and over here on the side, this is the G811. You'll see these are the numbers, uh, RA worm, deck worm, that... Uh, correspond to uh, the things that we see here on our hand controller. Let's see if I can switch this up. There we go. So these are the same values you see here. And I just want to confirm that the values we see here on this webpage are the same ones you see here, because sometimes they're not. 
Uh, so for my uh, for my mount right now, this is a G11. So I'm looking at uh, this call. Well, that didn't really help. This column here. So it says uh, 360, 360, 25, 25, 256, and 256. So that's accurate. Now, if I happen to have had a, a G8 that I was connecting, these values would be 180, 180, 25, 25, 256, 256. So um, that's just kind of a safety check to make sure that's the case. Now, if they aren't the correct values, just go ahead and type them in correctly. So for example, uh, if I was uh, had a G8, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just type in 180. And then of course I would do this for this next one, delete, 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 one, eight, zero, enter. And that's what I would do. Um, chances of that happening are pretty slim, but does occasionally happen. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but now when we have this set up, uh, we're gonna go back to our main screen, back, 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 and uh, we are ready to go. So that is the initial setup of the Lost Mandy Gemini. You're gonna have all this information accurate. It's gonna give you some really accurate go-to and tracking. And let's get out there and take the next steps to do some go-tos and alignments and observing. Now, if you bring your Gemini in and disconnect it from the motors, uh, you're gonna find that it beeps. Uh, beeps like crazy. Uh, and it's it's not, there's no problem, but it's just telling you that it's, it can't connect to the motors and control them. And it's super annoying. So I just wanna show you real quick how to do that, how to uh, set your Gemini so that the motors don't beep. And what we are gonna do is just go to menu and we're gonna go to track. And instead of sidereal rate, which is assuming that the, you know, the RA motor is gonna continue to move and it needs to talk to the motor, we're gonna choose terrestrial. And what terrestrial essentially is, is no tracking. No tracking in either the RA or the deck axis, neither motor is moving. So turning this on is going to cause the motors to, or sorry, to cause the Gemini that is not connected to your motors to stop beeping. And it's gonna stop uh, issuing that warning.